Guy's going strong, Mac. Yeah, we won't be tomorrow. We're going to scare him tonight. Yeah, I'm talking to your hat. He's not one of your mugs you can push around. Forget it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Tonight, we have in our power to ask definitely incriminating questions of these officials and the power to demand satisfactory answers. What really is the truth in the case of the racketeer and gunman, Rocky Sullivan? Why did the police release him so suddenly with all the evidence they had piled up against him? Why does the prosecutor's office refuse to investigate? Tomorrow, the new grand jury will meet, and tomorrow, these questions must be answered. Turn it off, Fraser. He ain't gonna appear at no grand jury tomorrow shooting off his mouth. I say he gets it tonight. Not while I'm around. Now wait, both of you. There's no sense in running ahead of ourselves. Maybe we don't have to go that far. Don't forget there's all kinds of grand juries and there's all kinds of ways to handle them. There's no sense going off the handle, Mac. Sure, sure, only I want to see some action. I don't care how we stop that guy, only I want him stopped. All right, fix it any way you like. But lay off the rough stuff, Mac. That's out. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. So long, Fraser. So long, Rocky. I hope you were stolen just now, Fraser, because I meant what I said. Of course I was stolen. But look, you can't just bump this priest off. They won't stand for it. It's got to look like an accident. Yeah? I couldn't beat a murder rap now for any of us, but uh, I could beat it for a hit-and-run driver. Hmm? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Call Steve and tell him. Yeah. Get your hand off that phone. Rocky! You're a smart lawyer, Fraser, except you should have made sure I left. Get over there. Rocky, don't. Don't do it. I'll do anything, anything. Oh, uh, no, you won't. This is your last double cross, Rat. No! I told you his hands off that priest, didn't I? Don't shoot! Don't! And you wouldn't believe me. Grab that gun, Rocky! Make me stop. Uh, nice shooting, Keeper. You almost hit me. Oh. Oh. Steve. Steve. Steve, this is Keeper. Get the cops. Sullivan. Rocky Sullivan. Me up! Take back! Thanks for the kills, too! Rocky Sullivan captured after the gun plane! Take back! Rocky Me Sullivan up. captured speedy trial assured! Rocky Sullivan found guilty! Thanks to guilty! Guilty! Guilty. Gee, Soapy, do you think they'll point him in a chair? Nah, don't be a sap. They can't build a dead house as a whole rocky. You mean he'll blow and make a getaway? Just wait. That's all. Just wait. Rocky Sullivan sentence! Sullivan to get here! Ain't the sentence to die in Boy, I bet Rocky shows them mugs how to die. Sure he will. Remember what he said at the trial? He said he'd spit in her eye. Yeah, and he'll do it, too. Ha! <laughs> Rocky will laugh at those guys. Rocky Sullivan dies in March! Rocky Sullivan dies next week! Rocky Sullivan dies tomorrow! Rocky Sullivan dies tonight! 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 tonight. 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 Hey, Sullivan, that priest pal of yours is here. All right, get out. Listen, big shot, you got only five minutes, so don't stall around. Five minutes till that hot seat, and I'm going to tell the electrician to give it to you slow and easy. Get out of here. Somebody get this screw heel out of here. Get him out. Get him out. Hello, Rocky. Hiya, Jerry. What do you hear? What do you say? Uh, how do you feel? Oh, like a million. If it wasn't for just one screw around here that keeps putting the needles in me. Uh, how's Lori? Taking it kind of hard? Naturally. She loves you, Rocky. Yeah, poor kid. Never did get a decent break. I tried to give her one, but all I gave her was a heartache. You don't want me to administer extra monction, Rocky? No, no, Jerry. Let's skip that. Well, then listen, Rocky, there isn't much time, and I want to ask you a last favor. Hey, what's up I can do, Jerry? Yes, sir. That's more than you could do under any other circumstances. Go ahead and spill it. If you have the courage for it, the kind I know you have. Oh, it ain't going to mean much to walk in there, that you mean. Oh, I know that, Rocky. It'd be like sitting down in a barber's chair. They're going to ask me if I've got anything to say, and I'll say, yeah, sure. A haircut, a shave, and a massage. <laughs> You're not afraid, Rocky? Yeah, no, they'd like me to be, wouldn't they? Uh, I wish I could oblige them, Jerry, but I can't. You gotta have a heart for us to be scared, and I don't think I got one. Half that add to me a little chunk at a time, and all the jails I've been in. But, Rocky, suppose I asked you to have the heart to be scared. What do you mean? Suppose at the last minute those guards had to drag you to the chair, screaming and begging for mercy. Suppose you turned yellow. Turn yellow? Say, what's got into you, Jerry? You were just worrying about me having courage. I know, Rocky, I did. But I mean a different kind of courage. 
kind of courage that's born in heaven. I still don't know what you mean. Rocky, when I came up here, a crowd of the boys saw me off the station. Soapy, Bim, Johnny, and all the rest of the kids. You know what they said to me when I left? They said, Father, tell Rocky to show him up there how to take it. Tell him to show the whole world the stuff a real guy has made of. Tell Rocky we're pulling for him and to go out laughing. So what do you want? I, I ain't gonna let him down if that's what's bothering you. I want you to let him down, Rocky. You've been a hero to those kids and to a lot of other kids all over the country all through your life. Now you're gonna be a hero to them in death, too. That's what I want to prevent, Rocky. Just a minute, Jerry. You want me to pull a neck, turn yellow, so, so those kids will think I'm no good? Yes. Yes, I want them to despise your memory, Rocky, and to remember you as a yellow coward rather than as a glorified hero. To be forever ashamed of you. Do you understand? Oh, you ain't asking much, Jerry. Oh, yes, I know what I'm asking, Rocky, but I thought maybe... Well, on account of being kids together, you, you might want to join hands with me in saving some of those boys from ending up here. Oh, it's a great idea. Great idea, but you, you asked me to throw away the only thing I got left in the world. The only thing they haven't been able to take away from me. You want me to give them newspaper sob sisters out there a chance to tell the whole world another rat turn yellow. Well, you're asking a little too much. I won't do it, Jerry. You work it out those kids some other way. Oh, but I can't reach all the kids, Rocky. Thousands of hero-worshipping kids in a thousand slums in a thousand cities. Oh, don't give me that humanity stuff again, Jerry. I did enough of that in the courtroom. I opened up on everything. Name names, gave the low down on the whole dirty mess. And now, what, what more do you want? Oh, God knows I haven't the right to ask for anything more for myself, but for... Well, don't. All right, Rocky. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Jerry, you, uh, you figuring on going in with me? If you want me to, Rocky? Yeah, sure. It's gonna be kind of lonesome walking down that last mile. But, uh, look, kid. Do me a favor, will you? Just one. Don't let me hear you pray. Promise me that, Jerry. I promise. And, uh, you say goodbye to Lori for me? Yes. Come on, wise guy. Get away from me. Get this screw off me or I'll bust his face in. It'll be the last face you see, big shot. And it'll be laughing at you. Don't come near me in there, screw. I'll beat your brains out. All right. Step back, Edwards. You take his arm, Thompson. boy, Rocky. Take your own company. So long, fellas. I'll be waiting for you all. Come on, Rocky. Come Come on, Rocky. This is what they call the last mile, Jerry. But it's, uh, it's kind of a short one. Rocky, what I said before. No. Rocky, please. No, I tell you. No one will ever know, Rocky. No. No, shut up. Stop here. Go ahead, Rocky. Rocky, please. Okay, Jerry. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, no. No, no, don't kill me. I don't want to die. Oh, please. Don't let me die. I can't. I can't. Oh, let me go. Please, please. I don't want to die. Don't kill me. Please don't burn me that girl. Don't burn me that girl. I don't want to die. Ah! God have mercy on you. Rocky dies yellow. Rocky dies yellow. Cowards, death, three witnesses. We know all about it. Rocky dies yellow. And at the fatal stroke of 11 p.m., Rocky was led through the little green door of debt. No sooner had he entered the debt chamber than he tore himself from the guard's grasp and flung himself on the floor, screaming for mercy. As they dragged him to the electric chair, he clawed wildly at the concrete floor with agonized shrieks. A picture of of utter contempt. Rocky Sullivan died a coward's death. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Not one rotten word of it. 
It's the same in the other papers, too, Soapy. And they said it over the radio. I don't care what they said. He didn't die that way. Oh, not Rocky. He couldn't, I tell you. It's a lot of lies. Hello, boys. He's Father Jerry. Hey. hey. Let's ask him. He ought to know. He'll tell us what happened. Father Jerry. You were there. You saw it. What happened? Did... Did Rocky die like, like they say here in the paper? Like a... Like a yellow rat? It's all true, boys. Every word of it. Then... He died like they said. Then... Then Rocky... He was a rat. Boy, what a chump I was. I thought all the time. I thought... Sophie. That... I'm going to have choir practice tonight. I'll expect to see you all there, I hope. All of it. Yeah. Yeah, sure, Father. We'll be there. Okay, Father. Okay. Father Jerry? Yes, Laurie? I know about Rocky. I knew you would. And now, let's say a prayer for a boy. A boy who couldn't run as fast as I could. Our play has an epilogue, starring James Cagney, Pat O'Brien, and Gloria Dixon as themselves. And here they are. You know, Mr. DeMille, it was quite a shock to us to think that the Lux Radio Theater would do this play we've just finished. Shock? Well, if there's anything wrong with the play, don't you think you're a little bit late in bringing it up? Oh, don't get us wrong, C.B. There's nothing the matter with the play. It's just that, well, dirty faces on a Lux program. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, we're not out of here yet, Jimmy. Wouldn't surprise me at all if Mr. DeMille suddenly produces one of his bathtubs and throws us all into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll overlook this feeble effort to twit me on my bathtubs, Mr. O'Brien. After all, I must remember that we're temporarily neighbors now at Paramount. Yes, that's right, but I notice that Paramount is courting Warner Brothers. At Warner's, I work with Jimmy and Angels with Dirty Faces, then I go to the other extreme and do a picture for them called The Devil on Wheels. Now Paramount wants me to the skies again, a little number called Heaven on a Shoestring. They're all bent on keeping me off the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. We started off by talking about Lux Soap, and before we're completely <coughs> sidetracked, there's something I really want to say to Mr. DeMille. It's just that I think that Lux Soap is about the grandest care under the sun for any girl who wants to keep her complexion looking its best. I use it, and that's what I think about it, Mr. DeMille. And coming from one so lovely, that, that's doubly appreciated, Gloria. But about this play we've done, it seems a long time since a play has brought home so forceful a moral in such dramatic fashion. What do you all think about it? Well, it seems that pictures really are beginning to educate instead of simply amuse. Maybe Angels with Dirty Faces helped some kid somewhere to get the right kind of a start, and maybe it also helped people to remember the really great and unselfish work that's going on without publicity, without fanfare, by men like the one called Father Jerry. Yes, and I was just thinking that it's rather a coincidence that we should have done this play on this particular night. It comes between two anniversaries, both commemorating men who set a kid's imagination on fire. Yesterday was the anniversary of Lindbergh's landing in Paris. Tomorrow was the anniversary of the death of Captain Kidd on a scaffold. Daring men, both of them, but one happened to be on the wrong side, like Rocky Sullivan. When boys learn there's just as much excitement in doing the right thing, that piece of furniture called the electric chair will soon go out of style. Good night, C.B. It's well coming back. So long, C.B. Bye, Mr. DeMille. Fly yeah. back to the soon again, Andrew. A particularly important announcement about the play and stars coming to you next Monday will be given presently by Mr. DeMille. Heard in tonight's play were Frank Nelson as Frazier, Lou Merrill as Mac Keeper, Frankie Darrow as Sophie, Ty Kendall as a guard, Ross Forrester as Steve, James Eagles as Hunky, Frank Bielan as Crab, Joe Brown Jr. as Johnny, Harris Berger as Bim, Jackie Morrow as Red, and Forrest Taylor as Kennedy. Gloria Dixon appeared through courtesy of Warner Brothers Studio, where James Cagney has just completed Each Dawn I Die. Harris Berger is from Universal Studio, and Louis Silvers from 20th Century Fox Studio. He directed music there for young Mr. Lincoln. 
Be sure to listen to the new Lux Daytime Radio program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan. The makers of Lux Toilet Soap bring you this enthralling story about the love and problems of a young, attractive woman doctor every afternoon, Monday through Friday. Look in your newspapers for the time and station. The Life and Love of Dr. Susan comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. Here's Mr. DeMille. It's an unusual program we bring you next Monday night, not only because of the importance of our stars, but because our play is one which has only just been released. It's our adaptation of the new Columbia Pictures Corporation film, Only Angels Have Wings, which incidentally has no connection with angels with dirty faces. They're different angels. The story is a highly dramatic romance, a thrilling adventure on land and in the air, played against a colorful South American background. And our stars playing the same roles they do in the picture are Cary Grant, Jean Arthur, Thomas Mitchell, Richard Barthelmus, and Rita Hayworth. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gene Arthur and Cary Grant in Only Angels Have Wings with Thomas Mitchell, Richard Barthelmus, and Rita Hayworth. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>